Good morning. Welcome to Trade Talks. I'm your host, Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. And I'm excited to kick off our latest weekly series with Chris Dearborn. He is the Managing Director on our Markets Intelligence Desk, where every Friday we're going to be bringing you a weekly market review right from the trading desk on the Markets Intelligence Desk. Thank you so much for joining me. Super excited about this. Not a bad way to end the week, right? <laughs> Um, and what so, a week it is. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And we thought the first two weeks of February were a little bit crazy. But talk about March madness mm -hmm. for the markets because the first two days have certainly uh, thrown a wrench in, in the really bull camp. Really has. You, you, you think about stock-specific items. You think about sector-specific items. And you've got to bring in the macro. And did we get some macro coming in. You think it would be economic data. You think it would be the Fed chairman, uh, Powell speaking for the first time, all of which was great. And then you've got, you know, the White House talking about tariffs that just kind of sank the market right there. Right, and I think right. it was completely unexpected. Very much so. That's what we're seeing across the board, what we've heard and what you've seen the pundits on TV speaking about as well. And what that did was really send the markets into a spiral yesterday uh, to kick off March. We're up nearly half to three quarters of a percent, mm -hmm. ending down significantly. You saw a two and a half percent intraday move. That breadth of the market and the volume was so significant that you really had selling across the board in every major sector, whether it's impacted by these basic materials or not. Right, and, and, and clearly the market is super sensitive to these trade tariffs. I mean, even mm -hmm. looking at it right now, what are we, at 11 a.m. on Friday morning, VIX is up nearly 50%. You've got a 25, 26 handle on the VIX, give or take, back and forth again. You've mm -hmm. got great volume again. So it's showing that there's validity to the tape here. You know, the higher the volume, the, more, the larger the moves, the more active traders there are on an intraday basis. Even though you've got a number of stocks still trading near or at all-time highs, Considering where the market is right now, you talk about the Main Street Index, the Dow Jones Industrial, where it's trading about 24,000. That's where we were back in December. So a right. nice pullback isn't necessarily a bad thing, but you have to reevaluate the fundamentals that are going to be driving this market either up or down over mm -hmm. the next month. And I think that's what the concern is because everybody wants a correction. They want a more tradable mm -hmm. market. But when it happens within a day or two and you get these enormous swings in the Dow or these uh, extreme swings with, with the VIX, it's just right. it's a lot for any trader to process. Um, but outside of trade tariffs, the big conversation really was earlier this week. It's so funny how fast this news cycle <laughs> moves was really um, uh, Jerome Powell's first Absolutely. testimony, right? And the shift there was what's he saying, what's that going to apply for mm -hmm. interest rates? And that's where the sensitivity was. And I thought the markets absorbed it relatively well. They did. So, you know, you're looking at really, you know, the March 21st meeting, you're looking at 100% chance of interest rates being mm -hmm. uh, raised. And that's been very well telegraphed from the previous to the current. And that's going to continue. The question is whether it's going to be three, four, even two. You have a little bit of inflation creep back into the marketplace here. And that gave expectations of what is that going to do to future earnings. Now you get a nice tax break. But again, you know, not all companies have announced what they're going to do with that savings. You know, 44% of the S&P 500s made an announcement what they plan to do. But that's still a big chunk of large companies that impact this market. We don't know what they're going to do. Are they going to put back to buybacks? Are they going to put it back to cap reinvestments within the corporations of the business lines? Are they going to use it for pay raises? You know, you've seen a mixture of both across the board. Some companies have announced that we're giving employees a thousand dollars break. Others have announced a buyback announcement that's going to be increased for the year. So you need to see where that earnings, and that may take months, if not years, to work its way through. So what you've seen here so far is really on the back side of things, a number of other items that we were laser focused on get thrown out the window mm -hmm. by the president's comments yesterday. Right, well, if, if there's one thing that is certain, it's that markets don't like uncertainty, and we're certainly mm -hmm. seeing that being reflected right now. But um, what sectors are you continuing to watch? I mean, I would imagine that financials are going to be sensitive to what happens with interest rates. Absolutely. So you've seen, as expected, you know, for the month of February, we'll go back before yesterday's comments, you saw this consumer discretionary basic materials, two of the outperformers of the S&P, both up over 9%, and really a driver of earnings there. You saw earnings beat, for the most part, uh, very significant up, mm -hmm. you know, 75% of the S&P 500 beat for the previous year's total, which is nice. You're also seeing earnings surprise to the upside as well of 3.8%. Mm -hmm. So what you're seeing there is companies are doing okay. Uh, what was focused on beforehand is now changed. You know, and with that, you know, where is the S&P going to go? Where are the earnings going to be driven from going forward? You know, like I said before, it, the retail sector, the consumer sector, 
has been a constant driver. You know, two thirds of the U.S. economy is based off of consumer spend. Mm -hmm. And as long as you have consumer spend out there and the money being put back to work, you're going to have drivers of earnings here. You know, wages are starting to see an uptick. We want to see wages uptick a little bit more. Unemployment still trading at all time, all, all time lows. Right. You know, initial claims are at all time lows. So, you know, where is that going to come? There's plenty of people out there looking for work, but they just don't have the right skills for that next job. So you need training to go back to it. And that's where I think you're going to see that wage growth come. Once where wage growth starts to creep back into the market, you'll see spend come back in, yes. and then you'll see GDP start to rise. You know. All right. Well, let's talk about what's on tap for next week. Besides uh -huh. Trade Talk's <laughs> one-year anniversary, that's going to be the highlight of the week. Yes. <laughs> Um, but, uh, you know, what's on besides trying to figure out what's happening with trade policy mm -hmm. and looking forward to the Federal Reserve, what else are you watching? So, uh, away from basketball, which we're going right. to be watching here, I mean, you have, you have the Big East coming <laughs> You see to, the volume significantly drop in the You do, markets. especially intraday when you see uh, Villanova and some of the other schools <laughs> come over here to the Big East. Um, you've got some decent economic data coming out next week. Uh, you've got the tail end of earnings also for the mid and smaller cap names coming through. Remember, people focus on the S&P 500 as one of the large uh, drivers for earnings, but the Russell 2000, really the back half of that mid cap and small cap names is still in the middle of that reporting cycle. You've got a number of companies coming out next week, almost 15% of those numbers are going to report. So that could be impactful to the specific sectors, but on the overall market, it's going to be driven by the broader economic data and seeing how these macro factors really play out in the marketplace. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining me. And traders, don't forget, next Friday, March 9th at 2 o'clock, join Chris and I again for the weekly Markets Review with the Markets Intelligence Desk. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.